Hello class, good evening, welcome to your second session. Hope you guys are doing great. I want to make sure you guys listen to me. Hello, Roberto, Ana Maria Rivas, Jenny, and Fatima. Welcome. Do you guys listen to me? Hello, Alfredo. Do you hear me? Hello. Hello, teacher. Hey, good evening. Um, good evening. Welcome. Thank you so much for, for answering. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Roberto. <clears throat> Welcome. So how was your day? So good. And I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Right. So we're going to start today's session. Well, I hope you guys have been great, like, like I said, and we can have our second session, you know. And I would like to start by um, see by developing or by asking you a very quick question, okay? And this is the this is the question, okay? If you have to choose one of these um, emojis or one of these feelings, which one would you choose? Like today, like this moment. Can you check them out and tell me which one you feel more identified with? I don't know yet. What is in Spanish? I'm sorry? I don't know yet. What mean in Spanish? Uh, annoyed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, annoyed. Annoyed, Um. it's... Um, I did see that describes someone who is, let's see, in um in a greater degree of that's a greater degree of angry. So if you are annoyed, it means that you you are angry, but I think that it's like higher. The feeling you or the feeling you're you're having is stronger than angry. Something that if you are annoyed is because you are really frustrated, maybe annoyed is because you can't put up with this. You're really annoyed. Uh, I don't know what annoys you, but if uh, maybe that, that will depend honestly what I know you, but that's similar to angry, but it's, it's like strong, it's, it's stronger than angry, okay? Are you annoyed? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why is it? Why uh, is it? <laughs> today I feel I feel quiet. Oh, you feel quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, like no more, not much to say. I see. Okay, what about the other ones? Glass, how are you doing? How how do you feel? Or how are you feeling today? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be here again. I feel I feel I feel a little bit tired because as I was telling you before, I have to stay working until 9 p.m. I see. Well, that happens sometimes, right? That we have to work um larger, you know, or like shift more hours than we usually do, but yeah, that's how, how it is sometimes. Life is not fair, <laughs> Robert. Okay, good. And what about the other ones? How are you feeling? Any other opinion? Come on, don't be, don't be shy. I just have one minute left for this activity. Anybody else who would like to participate? Okay, on the chat, you can send me a message. Yeah, like uh, you can send me, you know, maybe just the adjective. Remember that we were talking about adjective yesterday? And then we're gonna, you can even use adverbs, you know, to, to intensify or to make emphasis on the, on the adjective. For example, I'm very, uh, tired. I'm very excited. I'm extremely tired. Um, what? Fairly tired. Um, what? Uh, what are the other ones that we practiced yesterday? 
somewhat, you know, angry and so on, right? These are some of the adverbs that we practiced yesterday. Janita says, I'm very tired. I know it's Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday, but I know sometimes we have these really busy days and yeah, it, it's, it, it happens. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> Hungry. Yeah, Christian, I know. You can eat. I mean, if you participate, you, you're here, you can grab a bit, you know, grab a bite, something, and then you can eat and then it's okay and then anybody else i'm glad nobody is sad nobody is angry because it can be or even worse nobody's sick you know because that sometimes make us feel really like down and we don't i don't want that and nobody wants that right and okay, let's move on. Well, thank you for, for your participation. And I really hope everyone is doing great. And I would like to know if you were able to access to the platform and check on the exercises and also the videos. Okay, send me on the chat if you did so, if you were able to access and, and check on the exercises on the platform. Send me a yes on the chat, please. Let's see. Uh huh. How many? How many were able to access to the platform, to the platform, and check on the exercises? If you haven't, or if you don't have the access to it, just make sure to report it. I saw. I always see messages on the on the chat, and the the uh, chat group we have on WhatsApp, and you can report everything there because we have uh, IT there, and they can help us out with this type of inconveniences. Okay. Well, we need to move on, class. Thank you so much. I do encourage you to practice and participate with me here. Remember, this is your class, and if, if you don't speak, then I'll be the one who's going to be speaking, which doesn't make any sense. I want you to speak and ask questions. Remember, the cameras must be on all the time um, unless you have reported it because any inconvenience with your uh, camera, right? So what do, you, what do you remember about yesterday session? Well, what was yesterday session about? Nice, nice Walter. I'm glad. Nice, uh, Fatima. You're happy, excited. That's awesome. So, any any opinion about yesterday's session? What was it about? Whether we talk about yesterday, I want you to please like participate because we don't have much time and we have to uh, move on a little bit, you know, faster because. Uh, Today we have to finish first section because it's our second day. And uh, basically for this week, I'm gonna have to cover uh, in two days, one section because the whole week is for two sections, remember that. So we have to hurry a little bit. So tell me, what do you remember about yesterday's session? You can send a message on the chat or you can open your microphone. No participations, come on. I feel like I'm talking I'm talking to myself. And I think there are 20 students connected. Well, what did we study yesterday? Or what was the conversation we talked about yesterday? Do you remember? Adverbs before apathy. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Appreciate it. Yes, we talked about adverbs, right? Okay, what are those examples that we said yesterday? Do you remember? Give me an example. Give me a sentence with uh, these examples, with these adverbs that I said yesterday. Starting from the top until the list, you know, the list in um, the list of the adverbs that, that describes, you know, um, a list degree right, of emphasis. So anybody? It's okay. You can just open your microphone or send me a, a message on the chat. Come on. No examples? No, nothing to talk about about yesterday's session? All right, so let's do this. Okay, thank you so much, Alfredo. Uh, can you repeat it one more time so everybody here hears?
The flower is beautiful. The flower is beautiful, right? So that is one description of the flower. Art. Oh, the, the, Art. Fla the flowers are beautiful. Okay. And then we can make that sentence into a stronger statement by adding an adverb. For example, um, what about Alfredo? If you add one of these, can you see the screen? The flowers are, and then you use, you know, any of these adverbs. The flowers are extremely, Tall? no, extremely beautiful. Yeah, the flowers are very beautiful. The flowers are really beautiful. And you see how I'm placing the advert? And this is basically just, you know, intensifying, right? The adjective. The order I am presenting them, like we said yesterday, are making an emphasis on the adjective. So if I say the flowers are pretty, like, beautiful, pretty beautiful, it's like, you know, uh, you see pretty where it is located. So that's, you know, how how strong, you know, it can be in the sentence, right? And then fairly in the last, the, the least, like this, this um, let's see, adverbs are organized from the most to the least, right? So that's the way it, it intensifies, you know, the sentence. So if you say the flowers are somewhat, Beautiful, you can still say that, but then it's not the same. Like there's a there's a difference between you know these two sentences when you say extremely and somewhat because of the you know of the adverb. Okay, so this is what we said yesterday, and I like to talk about one exercise so we can do it together. Uh, maybe if you have seen this already on the platform, and I would like to hear opinions, and we're gonna like try to solve this together and you tell me what you think the answer is for this exercise. So the question is, what's so like? Is it an interesting place? We have four choices. May I have any opinion about which is the best description for uh, this exercise? What is the best answer? Take a look at them, please. Any opinion? If we can uh, list them like A, B, C, D, what would be the best? What would be the best answer for this exercise? Let us see, teacher. Rafael says, let us see, okay? Do you guys agree with Rafael? Yes, it has amazing shopping and the people are pretty friendly. Okay, thank you, Rafael. I would like to know if the other ones agree with, with Rafael or do you guys disagree? And Rafael, and then what about the other one? Come on. Everybody, you know, can say, yes, I agree with Rafael. I don't agree because I think this is the answer. So what's your opinion? Remember, there are no right or wrong answers. I think somebody is, you know, um, circling the answer here. Okay. No other opinion. I think there's one on the chat. Rafa is correct, says Yanira. Okay, so we have two opinions. And of course, he is right. This is the answer. Why is this the answer? And I want to explain this because you might find this on the platform. Whenever you find this exercise on the platform, you will be presented for questions, okay, and also for answers. And then my recommendation class is that you go over the four questions and then you go over the four answers. And based on that, you make a decision so you don't, so it's easier for you to identify the correct one. In this case, 
what's so like is asking for a description of the place. And that is where Raphael is right, because he's telling you what's so like. And then, well, uh, is it an interesting place? Yes, it has shopping. Uh, it has amazing shopping. And then in that people are pretty friendly. So basically, it's describing the place. So this is the correct answer. And Rafael is right. So a round of applause for you, Rafael. And also there was somebody else who was supporting your answer. Okay, so that's, that's the first one. You're gonna have to do the next ones on the platform. You don't have to use this one because it was already used. So you will have to think about what will be the answer for the other ones. You know, you have to exclude the one we already used, okay? Do you have questions? No questions? Clear as to why we chose, yet it has amazing shopping and blah, 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 or do you have any questions? If there are no questions, we need to move on because time really flies, okay? Here we go. Okay, now, see, let me close this window. And we're gonna talk about conjunctions. Who was able to watch this video? The video I'm trying to display, I'm trying to display just one part of the video. Who was able to watch the conjunctions video? Can you explain to me how does it work and what a conjunction is? Anybody? Okay, well, no problem then. But then um, conjunctions class, there are not only these four we have presented on the, on the video, there are many more, right? But then today we're gonna focus on only four conjunctions, okay? And we have the conjunction and, but, though, and, however. So that's gonna be for today's se session, okay? So we have conjunctions are many more, right? These, is, these are only four examples that we can bring. And, but, though, and however. Now, the big question is, how do I use them? Well, let's analyze them together. Let's see, Alfredo, read the first, the first sentence. This one, this one, please. Uh, it's an exciting city, and the weather last, last night, nice. Okay, thank you so much. Rafa, read the second one. Okay. It's a big city, but it's not too big. Okay, thank you so much. So what do you find in like, uh, what's the difference between using and and but? Based on this sentence, what do you understand? What do you find here? And that we can say, well, I'm gonna be using and when I want to do this in a sentence, and then I'm gonna be using but when I want to do or express this idea. So what can you infer? What do you understand about the usage of and and but? Let me ask you a question. Okay, let me ask you. What happened if I say it's an it's an exciting city, but the weather is nice? Does it make sense for you? Like if I say, you know, a hey, uh, Rafa. Is a nice person, but he's not friendly. Does it make sense? No, right? No, no. How can can't he be friendly? And if I'm saying that he is a nice person, so in this case, what I'm trying to illustrate, class, is that whenever we have the conjunction, but we are expected to give a negative idea on the second, you know, uh, sentence. And in the other one, the other conjunction, which is N, that will, that will basically add or provide extra information about, you know, the first sentence. But will connect an idea that is negative. It makes sense if I say, um, you know, Rafa, 
is not friendly, but he likes helping other. You know, that makes sense because I'm I'm providing you an, a negative one. I'm making a contrast on these ideas. Okay. The same happened with the next the next conjunctions, though and however. What is the difference between however, though, and but? The placement in the sentence, because they connect ideas that are being contrasted, okay? We're going to work in some examples, like together. Yes, uh, this is on the video class, but I want you to create your own example. But that's the point. The point is that you guys understand, and you're going to demonstrate if, that you understand by providing me with examples, okay? But before we do that, Let's take a look at this one, okay? Let's see, I'm um, gonna choose one more. Let's see, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, read these sentences, please. City, uh-huh. La dos. Yes, please. Hello. Both, yeah. The city is hungry and small. Mm -hmm. Canada is the country and very clean. Thank you so much. Well, some ideas, uh, just in the class. And, which is our conjunction, that's the name of this word, conjunction, is what? It's just joining two ideas, right, together. The city is ugly and a small, joining two ideas. The same happened, Canada is a big country and clean. So we have two ideas. And is putting together two ideas. And it's just basically adding or giving more information about you know the sentence. That's how it works. Something crucial that we have to pay attention to is how we use the punctuation, like I'm explaining in the details here. Before we add the conjunction and we place a comma, as you can see here. Now, open your microphone or send me a sentence on the chat using that conjunction end. I know this must be easy for most of you, end. Okay, I'll give you two minutes. Use end, please. Whatever comes to your mind, use adjectives that you previously mentioned or whatever items you've learned that you want to share, go ahead and do it. Use end, please. I would love to read at least 23 sentences on my chat because there are 23 students connected. And I know some of you might be busy or doing some other things, but I would love you to, you know, leave some time to practice. And the only time to practice is like maybe uh, just by writing us an example via meeting chat. So I'll give you two minutes. Use the conjunction and. Teacher. Yes. Eh, es lo contrario del español casi, ¿verdad? Lleva coma. Si uno dice la ciudad es, es fea y pequeña, en este caso lo lleva la observación de una coma. Mm -hmm. Ugly and small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That coma here is important because it's connecting another idea, okay? And then when you, in the Spanish, let's see, the Spanish doesn't add a comma, right? But then the, the point here is that we are adding another idea. We're not changing the meaning, the idea of the previous sentence mentioned. It's basically, you want to just add Rafa extra information, but the extra info is, in the same way, right? You don't change into a different uh, ne or negative meaning. Basically, you remain with the same with the same idea. In this case, it's being a positive one. And um, what you need to pay attention to is that well, if I'm connecting another idea with the conjunction and I make sure I place the comma. And that's how it is here. And in this context, what's your what's your example? Have you thought about any example? 
that you want to share? Robert, that's a good one, Robert. Good one. It's Robert. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm fine. Um, I have an example. Uh, my, my town is a place very nice and with a lot of people. Me there. Uh huh. My town, <laughs> my town, it's a very nice place, you said, right? Yes. And with and, a lot of people. And with a with a lot of with a lot of people. Okay. Uh, my town, it's a very nice place. Maybe in this case, if I say and with a lot of people, I just can you need to look for another description because uh with a lot of people, uh -huh. muy poblada quizás. And then what about if we use the adjective crowded? Because this is important. If you want to say, if you if you want to use any, try to use like similar like ideas. In this case, we're using two adjectives, you see? So maybe you want to say like this, my town, it's a very nice town. Or it's, it's a very nice city. And um, maybe, crowded like try to look for an adjective that will describe and remain with the same structure so you add more information because if i say with with a lot of people i don't need to add n right because you basically you don't need it like i can say my town is a very nice is a very nice place with a lot of people sounds sounds good because you're connecting with 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 is connecting you know the other idea that's why I suggest not adding N. You might want to look for a different adjective, okay? On this idea, the one you just mentioned. Uh, okay, send more ideas. Send, I don't know if if, uh, if I was able to explain the idea about the town and with. I'm studying and working. You are connecting to ideas and you are remaining with the ING. That's a good one, Alfredo, Enrique. The car is big and very nice. I like it. That one is cool too, Jocelyn. My friend is very beautiful and intelligent. Okay, I would like to be your friend. That's good. Then my notebook is light blue and white. Yes, you used two colors, right? Awesome. My, oh, I'm sorry, the neighborhood is noisy and clean. That's a good one. The city is very beautiful and small. Mm -hmm. Italy is a big country and a, in a, in a very beautiful place. Let's leave Venice place at the end. <clears throat> like big country, very beautiful place. Leave the noun at the end, but that's perfectly fine. I like the examples you just sent because they are they are following the pattern, right? That is adjective, adjective, and it sounds that sounds more, you know, um sort of for the uh, topic we are discussing. Let's see, my sister is beautiful, but it's very small. This one, Walter, is connecting uh, an idea, which is gonna be like with the conjunction, but it's okay, because it's giving a contrast on what you already mentioned. But then I suggest changing a small into short, because if it, if it is the height of a person, we say she is short, I am short. Small is more like for places or uh, like uh, other dimensions, no, no people. People are tall and short. So I suggest saying short. My house is beautiful and big. You see big here is okay. My house, my house, like I think it's house or not whose house, uh, beautiful and big. And I can say my house is beautiful and small. Small applies for a house. Well, that's good. So I see based on the evidence or based on your examples, I can tell you have understood the use of and. Let's move on. What about the other ones? What about, exactly. What about, let's see, the use of but 
I know someone already sent an, an example with but, but then uh, look at the example here. But, but let's see, I'm gonna ask Walter. Walter, read the, the, the idea where, where you have, where we have a light bulb here. This one, this, this one, read that part, please. Walter, read, just read this one, please. This one connects positive idea and negative idea, and it goes in the middle of a sentence, and a comma goes before the conjunction as well. Okay, so that's basically it. We have here some that example. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Example: uh, the part is clean. But it is very small. The food is good, but it is very expensive. All right, as you can see here, we have uh, two ideas, a positive and a negative idea about the um, about in the same sentence. Okay, so the park is clean, but it's very small. So you would like it to be like the park is clean and it's very large, right? You can say that or be, see? But then since it's something negative, you are adding to this to the idea, you say, but the food is good, but it's very expensive. But if I say the food is good and it's very cheap, then it sounds good. You're not contract contrasting the idea. But if it's something negative, you're gonna mention. It's suggested to use but in the middle of the sentence. Okay. Now let's let's produce some, some sentences. I'll give you two more minutes. Now use use but please. But like when I say but I love you, but and then you want to say something. Wow. You know, you're so kind, but, you know, that but is something that we we know that the idea that is coming right after that is something negative. My work is interesting and, uh, and a very nice one, I think. The park is quiet and very and, and very nice place. My son is pretty look, pretty look and very not intended, okay? About but. You can open your microphone or you can send your ideas. My sister is shorter in height, but, but, but very big heart. Ah, I see. Yeah. I like it. My, you can say my sister is short, maybe just short. The, the thing, Alfredo, is that when you use shorter, is because you are comparing. You just say short and it's okay. You say my sister is short in height, or just say my sister is short, but very big hearted. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, good. Anybody uh, else? Uh huh. Pero en en no sería entonces no es shorter, shorter. Uh, yeah. Porque yo quería poner o sea, más cómo le digo. Como más pequeña. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Ajá, basically, no sé si when you say shorter, it's because you want to make a comparison. Like, let me give you an example. My sister is shorter than me, than anybody else. In height is, height is basically the description, right? That's it, that's short, short is the height. So height is, it's not necessary to say it. So I can say my sister is shorter than somebody else, but she's very big hearted. So when you use shorter, you are expected to provide a comparison. Since you are not comparing your sister with anybody else, just by saying short, the idea is clear. So uh, shorter is the comparando con alguien más, otra yes. persona, la estatua. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. En este caso, que con parte del corazón. Sería solo short, entonces. Short, uh, short, short. 
porque la idea que se está agregando simplemente es una idea de que ella tiene un, es bondadosa, no tiene un gran corazón, es pequeña. But you're not comparing your sister with anybody else. You're just saying that. You are, you're just describing your sister. Uh, so, okay. Teacher. Uh, yes. I have an example. Okay. The food is delicious, but it's hot. <laughs> you see, that's a good one. Yeah, the food is delicious, but it's, it's hot. Yeah, that's a good one. And guys, you can use the address. Use them. I, you know, the food is delicious, but it's extremely hot. You know, try to use the vocabulary that we are learning. So the more you use it, the more uh, familiar you feel when you want to express your ideas and the more comfortable you feel too. The place is beautiful, says Justin Lee, but it's too far away. You see that one is, is good. It's a, it's a good one. He's saying to, to make more negative emphasis. And she's saying, but, because it's a contrasting idea in regards of the previous one. Yes, that's a good one, Jocelyn. All right, so I think we're fine. We need to move on, because time really flies. We need to move on. What about the use of the next one? Let's see these other ideas. Though, and however, I know though is 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 a good one because because you can you, you can simply say though at the end and you you know making a, a negative connection with the previous sentence. Let's take a look at this one. It's a big city. It's not too crowded though. You know, I like this one. I like using though. Sounds like it's a big city. It's not too crowded though. It's really good looking. He's not nice, however. You see? Well, however and though are connecting ideas, positive and negative. What happened with this one is that we we most of the time leave them, you know, at the end of the sentence. Okay. You it's more like let's say common to, to leave them at the end of the sentence. Though most of the time always at the end of the sentence. Sometimes I have observed, however, in the middle, but then, but this, this is recommended. Leave it at the end, but that's, you know, academically recommended. But then you can still leave however in the middle and it still, you know, makes sense. But then as of now, let's focus on the way it is being given on this, you know, session. Let's leave it at the end. Let's practice. Let's, come on, I want to read examples, but you can open your microphone too. Okay, my brother and I are twins, but we are very different, you see? Yeah, I like it, Roberto. Ana Maria, I like my house, but it's small. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know, that's a good one. What about though and however? Let's leave it at the end. I want to hear example. And then <clears throat> I like this because it gives us the opportunity to expand or to enhance our you know, vocabulary. So by saying though and, and however you know you are expressing a, a negative idea. Right? He studies a lot. <clears throat> Dennis studies a lot. He got low grade though <laughs> you see you're not expecting that right you're expecting that if you study you're gonna get good result result <clears throat> okay so you're connecting a, a negative negative idea my computer is so but it's very well is my house is a small but it's cozy but it's cozy okay but it's cozy okay that's another one sounds good what about though in a weather I haven't read anything yet So I'm gonna give you two minutes. Think about think about uh, one example with uh, the and however, however, okay. Just the point is to connect a negative idea, right?
I consider I'm a good teacher. I don't give away grades though. You see? He is my best friend. He doesn't help me though. You know? Or I can say, however, I am going to go to the movies this coming Saturday. I'm not going to invite you, however. So you see, I'm connecting ideas, a negative one. But then what, what do you think? What are some ideas you can think about? Uh huh. Go ahead, please. I think somebody's raising me. I saw a hands up, but then I didn't see it anymore. Who was it? Oh, Alfredo. Yes, go ahead, Alfredo. Uh, the weather was bad. Uh, however, we decided to go for a walk. I like it. This is exactly what I was saying. Based on my experience, however, makes sense if you leave it in the middle. Yeah. You just leave it in the middle of the sentence and it sounds good. But you can leave it at the end. Can you try saying the same example by leaving however at the end, please? Roberto, can you try now saying the same sentence, but leave however at the end? And you'll see that it may it makes sense and it has the same meaning. Mm, I'm thinking. Okay, so how was it? What is the example? I think I have I have an idea on the chat. Let's see. My friend is good looking. She is short. Let's say short things. She is short though. <laughs> That's an opinion. And it's good. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it is okay. Yeah, maybe you're not happy with, with her, her height, right? You you would like her to be taller. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's a good one. Class, um, do you understand how to use it? Be honest. If you don't understand, I would love to hear, you know, if you haven't understood, I would love you to tell me. And then uh, what you, you need to pay attention to the structure. You know, ideas that are positive and negative, I use so at the end or however. And I can use but in the middle. And I sometimes I can use however in the middle too. Let's see, I'll try to learn English. However, uh -huh, what's the other idea? Something important, something that we have to remember class is that if we use however, we are connecting another idea. That's why it's called conjunction. It joins, it brings together two ideas. That's why it's conjunction, you know, joins two ideas. Jocelyn, what's your example, Jocelyn? Jocelyn Rodriguez, what's your example? Fatima. David Armando, what's your example? Brenda, Selena, Judy. I don't hear it. Jaime, Griselda, I haven't heard anything. Ana Maria, what are your examples? Karen, Diego. I love walking on the beach. However, it's very hot. <clears throat> You know, that sentence, Ana Maria, is like uh, something that is happening at the moment, right? Something that is, I love walking on it. However, it's very hard, like at the moment. 
yeah yeah you can say it you know you know you don't expect the weather to be hot yes maybe you're not happy with that it's, it's very hot okay Diego what about you Diego what do you think you run what's your example about the structure being a study at the moment with however mm -hmm. with however mm -hmm. let me think uh, I love going to the gym however it's it's tighter mm -hmm. I love going to the gym However, it's tiring. Yeah, yeah. You can say, I love going to the gym. It is tiring, however. I love going to the gym. It is tiring, though. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Good job. My car is good. Use a lot of gas, however. Uh -huh. My car is good. It uses, you want to say it uses, because you're talking about the car, it uses a lot of gas, however. Uh huh. That's a good and then uh, she is a really nice person. She is very serious, however, yes. My house is small, but it's very cool. That is with but. My house is small, the concert is far away, however, I went. <clears throat> okay, maybe the concert was, because it's, it's past. The concert was far away, however, I went. So we remain in the past. My house is small and very beautiful, however, I like it. Okay, good. So let's move on, class. Let's move on because time with the flies and I don't have much time. Let's see, what about this idea? What is the, what is the answer here? Let's solve this together. Let's analyze it, please. Anybody who wants to volunteer, tell me what was the answer. One participation, please. Just one. Come on. I like to be a millionaire, okay? However, I'm, I'm for, yeah. I don't know. It's <laughs> like. the second picture. The second one, okay? Yes. The street are crowded, you know, and it's easy to get around. So the street are crowded, and it's easy to get around. So. Do you agree with, uh, who was the one who said it? Who said the who gave us the answer? Uh -huh, I don't I didn't was the that Rafael, Rafael, the second Rafael. The, okay. Yes, that the street are a crow, it's easy to get around touch. Okay, so I somebody checked the other one, right? Who checked the, it? The Let's second, see. let let it be. Let it be like the sun, let it be, let it be like the Beatles. Okay, so you're saying letter B, and somebody check it. Okay, somebody erase it already. So what do you think? Rafael is saying it's letter B. What about, second. what? yeah, the second one. What about the other ones? What do you think? Analyze the sentence, please. Is it adding extra information? This like, or more information about the previous sentence, or are we adding a negative uh, or a contrast on the idea? I just heard Rafael. What about the other ones? Please. <laughs> Let's sleep here. Who is your question, teacher? Uh, I my question, Rafael, is not for you. It's for the other ones. If they agree with you, but nobody answered. <laughs> I want to know, I want to know if the class agrees with Rafael. Do you guys agree or do you have a different idea? Rafael said already the answer is the second one. The street are crowded. It's easy to get around though. Class, agree or disagree? Come on. No ideas? Okay. Rafael, would you mind explaining to the class? Because you are right. You are right. Yes, totally correct. The answer is the one, this one, the, the one you said. Why did you decide to select this one? 
Yes, it's, it's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one, that's correct. Because if the streets are crowded, you know, it's not expected you easy, easy to get, you know, to the place. But it's normal that if it's crowded, you know, a lot of traffic is gonna take long, right? But the idea here is that even the streets are crowded, you easy get around the, you know, to the to other place or where you're going. You see? Therefore, the second idea, like Rafael said, is a negative idea. It's contrasting the first idea. And that's why Rafael is correct. Okay, that's correct. I Thank hope, you. I hope the other ones. You know, also help us understand. Okay. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for your uh, participation. Let's move on. I cuando vean esa en la platform, remember it. <laughs> I hope you don't get it incorrectly on the platform. Let's move on. Okay. Do you have questions, class? Questions? Questions? No questions? Because we're going to switch, we're going to change the topic. Now we're going to talk about moral bears. Questions before we move on? Okay. If there are no questions, there are no answers to. What about moral bears? I'm going to give you one minute for you to send on the chat the moral bears you know. Let's say one minute. Send me on the chat the moral bears you know. There are many, but the ones you know. What are the most common moral verse you know? Let's see, there's a message. Would, thank you, Fatima. Yes, that's, that's a good one. Would is, is a moral verse. Can, should, here you go. What others do you know? May, yeah, may is another one. You've mentioned should, may, let's see, what else? Might, yes, might is. Okay, hey, would okay. You have mentioned some of them already. Nice. Shouldn't, which is negative. I could, yes, I did it. Now we're gonna work on this class. Uh this one you barely see it, but then we're gonna listen. Maybe we're gonna practice this. I need some volunteers. I need Thomas and Elena. Who wants to help to read this dialogue? This is the last, okay, thank you. Who wants to go ahead? Let's see, I'm gonna choose because I don't have much time. And we're gonna like identify if we have some more others in this conversation. So I'm gonna choose the one who doesn't have the camera on to see if he or she is here. Fatima is gonna be Elena. And let's see, Jaime is going to be Thomas. So Fatima and Jaime Vladimir. So three, two, one, go. Can you tell me a little about Mexico City? Sure, I can. What goal do you like to know? Well, what's a good time to visit? I think you can go to any time. The weather is always nice. Oh, cool. I got a show. I see there. Well, you should definitely visit the National Museum and go to the Palace of Fine, of fine Arts. And what, uh, and, and what mm -hmm. else? Oh, you shouldn't miss the Pyramid of the Sun. It's very interesting. It's all sound already ex exciting. 
Nice. Thank you so much, Jaime. I like it. And thank you for your, for your participation. That was good. Thank you. Yeah. So let's see a little uh, like quick observations. We have, let's see here. Uh -huh. Like it, let you know anytime weather. What, what should I, what should I, what should I see there? What should I see? Oh, definite, definite is just one word. And then you add the second syllable. Definitely, definitely. Whenever you have the L-Y ending, this is another extra syllable. Most of the time, like I would say 90% when you have L-Y at the end of a word, you will pronounce it as a separate or, or as an individual syllable. So like definitely, and then happily, uh, nicely, uh, slowly. So Lee is pronounced as a separate syllable. Just keep that in mind most of the time, like most of the time, like 90 or more. So you say definitely, and then let's see what else, museum, museum, and the rest went really good. So thank you so much. On this conversation class, let's see what time, like we have four minutes. Yeah, four minutes. In this conversation, we have some modal verbs. Can you identify them, please, and tell me which one you find on this conversation? Class, which ones? We have three more minutes. Please help me. I need to go over this, uh, this uh, conversation. Tell me the sentence or the question it has that has the modal verbs. Yes, go ahead, please, Robert. Robert. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, can you tell me a little about Mexico City? Okay, so can is a what other? Yes. What what other? What other? Um you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Okay, you shouldn't miss the pyramid. Yes, it's another one. Okay, one last, please. There are there are more. Um, I should. Uh, what should? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. okay, you should definitely visit. Definitely. Okay. Yes, that's another one. Exactly. You should definitely visit. Right. Definitely, it is an adverb. But then should is the is the more adverb we are talking about. Okay, class. Uh, vamos a vamos a mezclar entonces español e inglés. Tienen que decirme si no se entiende, porque yo puedo hacer el cambio, hacer. Yo les pregunté al principio hablar más despacio. Sí, sí. Sí, ah. mi cerebro está encendido ahorita por entender todo. <risa> pero fíjese que es, es bueno como forzarse un poquito, pero tratemos de inferir las cosas en el contexto, si no, trataremos de Spanglish a veces, pero necesito que tengan la confianza y me lo dejen saber, porque si no, yo voy a estar asumiendo que se entiende y pues yo sé que es un error, pero por eso ustedes también tienen que sentirse la en confianza. Levanten la mano y digan, ya no entiendo. Y pues, Podría explicarme. Yo con mucho gusto lo voy a hacer. Al final del día, esa es la misión. La misión es confundir. La misión es aclarar las dudas que ustedes paguen en la plataforma y lo dice para resolver los ejercicios. Mañana vamos a retomar el, el tema de los morals, modales. Si usted puede ir a la plataforma, leer los videos y adelantar un poco, hágalo. Vamos a estudiar el can, el should, can't y el can't. A can't, can, should, and shouldn't. Eso vamos a ver y hay más que, que revisar la, las estructuras. Mañana las vamos a revisar, ¿ok? Así que yo los dejo. Eh, tengo otro grupo enseguida y pues nos vemos mañana. Primero Dios, have a good one and drink water. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow. Nice. Blessing, you everybody. Blessings to everyone. So, bye. Thank <laughs> you.